morning and welcome to the chat on Newsday Amarillo and News Channel 10 2. I'm David Lovejoy. And I'm Chuck Alicious, Chuck Williams. Uh, Rhonda Lawner is away from the desk this morning. Uh, she'll be back with us hopefully on uh, Wednesday. May is Women's Health Month, designed to focus attention on the many health issues facing women. Uh, right now, one of the issues that is becoming an integral part of what we do day to day. Uh, over the last couple of years, there's a U.S. birth rate decline. Uh, we've seen it drop by more than 3% since 2022. Joining us today is Ms. Valerie Bauman. She uses her own exploration of the off-the-grid movement to better understand why people uh, pursue the path to artificial insemination and, and those ideas of having a baby now. Uh, inconceivable uh, will capture readers with the narrative around the meaning of motherhood, family, and offer a raw and honest account of her own uh, unorthodox choices. Mrs. Bauman, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Very well. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, let me ask you this. What made you interested in exploring this particular topic? Well, uh, it was my own journey. Uh, I was 38 in the middle of uh, the first summer of the pandemic in 2020. And while I've had you know, success in my career, uh, my personal life, you know, I just, I, I hadn't, you know, met someone to settle down with and, and I always wanted to become a mom. And I realized nobody's dating during the pandemic. It wasn't <laughs> a safe time to be going out there. And, you know, I kind of did the math, you know, gee, if I met someone right now, which isn't going to happen, you know, you figure at least date a year before an engagement, then, you know, the engagement can go six months to a year. And then how long do you want to be married? Suddenly I'm in my 40s. I need to act now if I want to become a mom. And I think the pandemic made a lot of people think about their mortality and their legacy. And so I started out like everybody else. I went to the sperm banks and I wasn't satisfied with what I found there. Um, largely because I wanted to give my kids more answers about the other half of their DNA than you could get from a sperm bank profile. So I stumbled across this world that I've dubbed the world of freelance sperm donation, which is an online space where websites and Facebook groups and dating like apps where you literally can swipe to get knocked up, connect sperm donors with uh, women seeking to have um, have babies and start families. And I realized this was a bizarre and seedy world, but at the same time, families were getting made and, and there were, you know, very happy stories coming out of this. So trusting my 20 years of journalism and experience as an investigative journalist, I, I thought, you know, I want to be able to interrogate and <laughs> and do a background check and 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 research the sperm donor myself and actually potentially have a relationship that could benefit my future child so um you know i became a part of the world as i was researching and writing about it and now my book inconceivable is out in bookstores everywhere telling my very deeply personal story so here we are you know if for somebody wanting to pursue this form of reproduction are there any is there any catch words or any safeguards you can put up there that they better be watching out for absolutely i think the key is to take your time and not rush uh what scares me is when i see women say i need a sperm donor tomorrow right that is not the way to make this decision you want to take your time, you want to vet, you want to insist on STI screening, genetic carrier screening, but even more importantly, you want to get a sense of the sperm donor's motivation. Do they have some Genghis Khan drive to <laughs> populate the earth or are they genuinely trying to help people? Uh, you, want to, you want to find out what kind of person they are. So many people think, oh, I just want a blue haired but, excuse me, a blue-eyed, blonde-haired, six-foot-tall sperm yep. donor. But let me tell you, the, the quality of somebody's character and their temperament is going to mean a lot more to you right. when you're dealing with temper tantrums in a four-year-old than whether the kid has blue eyes. So I think really thinking about getting to know your donor, doing background checks, making sure they're not convicted felons, mm -hmm. doing your due diligence to make sure that, you know, you're getting a good person because all sperm is not created equal. 
Wow, wow. It seems more and more women are opting for the non-traditional mm. route, like freelance uh, sperm donations. What factors do you think are pushing uh, women uh, and taking them away from the clinical, uh, the, the traditional sperm bank, those sort of as factors, uh, uh, as uh, a, a, an outlet for reproduction? It's a great question. I mean, for me, um, and a lot of women, it's it's wanting to, to have more answers than a sperm bank can or will give. Um, but I think even more, um, it's cost. Um, I mean, sperm costs an average about $1,200 per vial, and you're not even getting a full donation. Sperm banks will take one man's donation and divvy it up into eight, 10 different vials and sell them at $1,200 a pop. And unfortunately, the more children they produce, the more profitable they are. Mm -hmm. So your kid ends up with over a hundred siblings. A lot of a lot of prospective parents are concerned about having that many siblings out there. You know, I was able to find a donor who stopped after helping ten families. So there will be a limit on how many siblings my half siblings my child will have. I think also it's worth noting that members of the LGBTQ community and Racial and ethnic minorities um, don't feel served by the traditional health and fertility industries. Uh, you know, I interviewed um, black women who told me, you know, one one woman in my book, um, Inconceivable, mentioned she went undiagnosed with um, endometriosis, which is a very painful condition, for like 14 years, which affected her fertility. And doctors tend to underestimate the pain that black women say that they are experiencing. Mm -hmm. And when you feel underserved by the medical community and your pain is literally ignored, that's affecting your fertility, why would you trust them with the biggest decision of your life when you're becoming a mother? Yeah. So I think there's a lot of factors. Hey, well, one quick question to follow up. Uh, one last question for you. you. You cracked open the Pandora's box about uh, should individuals conceive through this this method have the right to know about their biological parents? And, and what, what do you feel on that protocol? Where do you stand on that issue? I feel very strongly on that. I think, you know, there was a time when the, the origin of sperm donation um, and even adoption was, was rooted in, in silence and secrecy. And now we as a society really kind of understand the harm that can do to adoptees. Mm -hmm. Of course they want to know where they come from. I don't understand why the same courtesy isn't extended to donor conceived people. Not all donor conceived people want to know their sper the sperm donor who helps produce them, but you just can't guarantee what a child will want. So why not give them the option to get those answers, to know where they're coming from, to know what genetic diseases they might be exposed to. Um, and, and, you know, I think a lot of parents expect to have a mini me, but I think we can all relate to ways that we didn't turn out just the way our parents are. <laughs> right. So you can't count on, you can't count on your kid feeling the same way you do about them not meeting their, the sperm donor. So Good. I think people need to have a more open mind about Ms. that. Ms. Valerie, where can they find out more information about you and find out where they can pick up your book and conceive? Well, my website is ValerieBauman.com, and I, my book, Inconceivable, is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, anywhere books can be sold, and it's available on Audible and Spotify um, in the audiobook format. All right, Ms. Bauman, thank you for your words. Uh, very encouraging yes. to some that are facing this problem. Find out and find Inconceivable in stores now. We're going to take a quick break. We're back with more chat right after this.